Emerson Epole, holding strong this past Tuesday, both California Senator and Governor primaries, back with the Emerson College Polling Weekly Podcast. More analysis, Spence. Before looking at tomorrow's primaries, do you have any final takeaways from this past Tuesday the 5th? Yeah, I mean, I think California is a state that we need to talk a little bit about, obviously, because of its size. But in the uh, Senate race, we remember Feinstein, uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein, she was leading in the polls. But we asked a second question about, do you think she should be reelected or is it time for somebody else? And more people, plurality, thought it was time for somebody else and she should be reelected. But in this primary, she got about 43, 44 percent of the vote. Um, They're still counting ballots, but that's where she's around. And that suggests that she's much closer to that 50 percent threshold than what we were anticipating. And because of that, I think that's probably off the table for uh, Kevin DeLeon, who's going to be going up against her. I think a second takeaway from California is now Newsom now got who he wanted, the Republican Cox, uh, the Trump um, endorsee. And so it'll be interesting to see if that plays out um, the way Gavin Newsom was hoping for it, a Democrat, you know, running against a Republican. I guess finally in California, I take a look at those 10 House races. And it was surprising to see that in five of them, the GOP candidate actually got over 50 percent of the vote in these jungle primaries. And that suggests to us that maybe that the uh, California, maybe those 10 seats is a little bit ambitious on the Democratic side, probably closer to three to five competitive races out there when all is said and done. Um, New Jersey, I thought was interesting in that the senator, Bob Menendez, if you remember, he's had those ethics violations. He was able to get about 60 percent of the vote. Um, But the Republican, Bob Huggin, he showed that he has some strength in the party. Uh, Menendez showed that he had some weakness. So I don't know if we're going to see a repeat of 2002 where the Democrats ended up taking off. Uh, If you remember, Senator Torricelli put back in Laudenberg. Um, It was a big fiasco. But you do know that in New Jersey, there is time to take candidates off the ballot. So those are some of the big takeaways. I think Christy Nome um, getting the nomination for governor out in South Dakota. She's a rising star in the party. And um, maybe Martha Roby having her issues down in the second district. She's a Republican who did not or took her endorsement away from Trump in 2016 and now finds herself in a runoff. Um, She only got 39 percent of the vote. Um, So it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out. Yeah, we'll go back to California to toot Emerson's horn. That's what I do, Spence. You're here for the analysis. But Emerson, of course, closest difference in both the governor and Senate primaries. All right. You got no poll this week, but you're still here with us. Uh, What about tomorrow? Provide some analysis in this space, please. Sure. The um, Nevada is... I think ground zero for uh, the 2018 midterms. You're looking at a congressional race. Uh, three, three out of the four congressional races are going to be competitive. You got an open governor's race, and we've got a very competitive uh, U.S. Senate race where the Democrats is, you know, era. this is the state where Clinton won, where there's a, Dem- a Republican U.S. Senator Dean Heller. So Democrats are very bullish on being able to take that seat and potentially. Uh, the governors and a um, couple of the congressional races. So that's going to be interesting to see who comes out of those. Maine I'm looking at is they. this is going to be the first time that they use, I believe, ranked choice voting. Um, it was a controversial uh, ballot question that got passed, went through the courts. Anyways, allegedly that's what it will be used. Uh, and it will be interesting to see who comes out of those primaries. Uh, remember, um, in the past, uh, third party candidates have played a big role up in Maine. This ranked voting, um, if a candidate doesn't get 50 percent, it would send it off into a, um, a top tier uh, st- uh, vote pattern. And then um, South Carolina it will be interesting to see Henry McMasters. He's the governor. He got put in after um, uh, what's um, the woman from the United Nations? Uh... Samantha Power. No, uh, Nikki Haley, uh, yeah. Nikki Haley, when she got appointed, uh, McMaster's got in there. McMaster's is a big Trump guy. Um, first guy really to endorse Trump. Remember, South Carolina is a big primary state. It's the third in the in the presidential primary. So he came out heavy. He's got three or four horses running against him. So it'll be interesting to see if he can clear that 50 percent because South Carolina has that same type of threshold. And then uh, in Virginia, we're definitely going to be watching who's going to take on Barbara Comstock uh, up in the 10th. So. Uh, Those are some of the races to keep an eye out on tomorrow, and um, we're going to be back in the field with a couple of polls. Um, Looks like we're going to be doing one out in Mexico. Um, There's a big presidential race July 1st, so we're going to be – we've been working on that and hope to have 
those results back to you guys shortly. Subscribe to Emerson College Polling Weekly on iTunes, Stitcher, and the CLNS Media Network mobile app.